Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson, and after seeing some small memories showcasing Joe Gardner's father and hearing about how much of an impact he made in Joe's life, I want to go through everything we know about the beloved jazz performer, husband, and father from Pixar's soul, Ray Gardner. By the way that Joe talks about his dad, it sounds as if Ray knew early in his life that music was what moved him and made him feel alive. It's my reason for living, and I know dad felt the same way. When Ray and Joe's mother Libba eventually met, fell in love, and got married, they settled down in New York City, where Libba would build her own tailor shop called Libba's Custom Tailoring, while Ray worked as a musician. According to the Art of Soul, that shop was where Ray and Libba's son Joe would spend most of his childhood, which was how all of the women in the shop became like family to Joe. While Ray went off to explore his dream of playing jazz by practicing piano, collecting records, listening to other artists, and taking games. Eggs, Libba was the one who supported the family and kept them afloat. Most of the time, though, it sounds like they kept those struggles away from Joe's mind. You didn't see how tough being a musician was on your father. I don't want to see you struggle like that. While he never got rich off of playing jazz, he was someone who became an established and respected musician. That's clear from how Joe's former student, Curly Lamont Baker, introduced Joe to the legendary Dorothea Williams. This is the cat I was telling you about, my old middle school band teacher. Uh, Joe is Ray Gardner's son. Ray had found a place within the jazz community to the extent where legends recognized his name even after he was gone. But it doesn't seem like he just cared about the fame or the praise. He was passionate about sharing his love of the genre, especially with his son. I'm sure that's the reason Ray and Joe bonded over listening to records and why Joe grew up taking piano lessons. Now sure, Joe didn't initially love jazz like his dad did. I mean, for a while, Joe took his music in his own direction direction when he was a keyboardist in some boy Cedric's rap group, but inevitably Joe was drawn to the craft just like his father. One day, when Joe was growing into an adult, Ray took him to the Half Note Jazz Club, where his life would change forever. Look, I remember one time my dad took me to this jazz club, and that's the last place I wanted to be. I don't want to go. I don't like jazz. Black improvisational music. It's one of our great contributions to American culture. At least give it a chance, Joey. Ray didn't see jazz as just one thing. It wasn't just a type of music that resonated with him. Jazz was also a genre that he took a lot of pride in and truly strived to help continue to expand through his own hard work and creativity. And really, all he wanted from his son was just to have an appreciation for the art as well. But instead, Joe became obsessed. This is where it all started. This is the moment where I fell in love with jazz. But then I see this guy, and he's playing his chords with force on it. And then with a minor, I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, sure, Joe learned to care about and adore jazz because of the players he saw live, but according to the Art of Soul, Joe would always say that his father was the person who inspired him to pursue a career in music. Ray gave his son a spark of passion, but that also meant that Joe would have to face many of the same hardships as his father, much to his mother's dismay. Ray watched for many years as his son failed to make it, faced rejection after rejection, and was driven to pursue his dreams on the side as he worked as a band teacher and gave lessons to kids. Though this wasn't exactly what Joe envisioned for himself, he was passing on his father's love of jazz to another generation of young people like Connie and Curly, who continued to pursue music because of Joe. Even with these successes though, Joe did continue to fight to reach the same heights as Ray. Now, I don't think he was trying to compete with his father, I believe he just wanted to be able to create the music that he loved like Ray had been able to. But that became difficult over the years as Joe's mother was forced to continue to support Ray and Joe through their music careers. Libba had seen the hardships that a musician had to face and was the one who had to support all of those passions. And while you can tell she was proud of the men in her family, it was draining work at times. And that means that there were moments where she would pressure Joe to find some stability since Ray very we rarely have that luxury. You always got a plan. Maybe you need to have a backup plan too for when your plan falls through. As someone who now works online and continues to strive to be able to accomplish everything that I want, including building this Disney community as large as it possibly can grow, I definitely understand the two perspectives of Libba and Ray. 
On the one hand, I conservatively try to move forward and strategize over what the next right move is like Joe's mother, but at the same time, a lot of the success I've been able to achieve is because I chose to work on things that I did only because I loved them at the start. For me, what's worked well has been trying to find the balance between being critical of how I'm spending my time and making rational decisions about my income while also continuing to do work that inspires me and gets me excited about the future. And hopefully Joe, having seen both of his parents' perspectives, will be able to strike a middle ground that works well for him, even though that doesn't guarantee him any more success than anyone else. Because the truth is that not everything went right for Ray. But by the way that Joe played for his father when Ray couldn't play anymore, there seemed to be a lot of pride, joy, and happiness within him till the day he died. While Libba was the one providing their family with a strong foundation, Ray was always the one who helped them all look for a better life. That's why, even after Ray was gone, Joe knew his father would have looked down on him with as much excitement as Joe carried when he got his big break. And while there was still some concern by Libba about how Joe continued to emulate Ray even after he was gone, she felt as much excitement and delight for Joe as Ray would have when she learned that he would get the chance to play with the best. That's why when Joe and his mother have a breakthrough in their relationship, Joe's mother brings him Ray's blue suit so that a piece of Joe's father could be with him on one of the biggest nights of his life as he goes after his dreams. Ray would have been so proud of you, baby. Like I've always been. Sure, Ray Gardner didn't go down in history, but throughout his life he built credibility as a musician, got to play what he loved as long as he could, passed his passion down to his son, and created an impact in the family that he helped build that would be felt for long after he went to the great beyond. Fun people, make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell if you're new, and then click on another magical video in the description on the screen. Finally, as always, thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thanks for watching, and have a magical day.